What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me for this class where we're going to learn how to make an organic balloon floral wall. Now, I'm going to stress the word organic because most of you, if you're new to the business or you've just seen a few examples of balloon walls, most likely you have seen the quick link method. Now, the quick link is the balloon that has the, the knot tie at the bottom of the balloon where the valve is and at the top so you can make strings of balloons. Then those strings are made into grids and then further into walls. Now, you can choose to make clusters on top of these quick link grids, but I find that you're going to spend more money buying the quick links and trying to cover them up with the clusters than just trying to make a balloon wall full of clusters alone. So this balloon wall that we're creating today, it is self-standing. I chose to put it in a gold frame rod because that was the look that we were going for for photos. But other than that, it is fully self-standing as you're going to see. You can move it around and you can make it bigger or smaller depending on how big your wall is. For a wall this size, I would only recommend two knot lamps as you're going to see. But if you are going to make be making bigger dimensions of this wall, I'm going to be making a list of how many knot lamps and how many poles you should buy um, for the type of size of balloon wall that you're going to be doing. So let's get started. So here we go, inflating our clusters. We are going to be doing clusters of 11 inch and 16 inch sizes only. So that means what you're gonna do is you're gonna be taking your sapphire blue that you're double stuffed, you're gonna take your bag of 11 inch, bag of 16 inch and start inflating them. To inflate two balloons at a time, some of them you inflate only 11 inches together. Again, this one that I just inflated, one is a little bit bigger, one is a little bit smaller. You do not need all of them to look the same. That is what you're actually trying to avoid. Now, because you're using a whole bag of 11 inch a lot of them are going to end up looking the same but that's okay as long as you keep your eye on I made a few that are 9 inch I made a few that are 10 inch and I'm keeping the size differentiation going now when you're inflating the 16 inch don't be afraid to inflate a few 16 inch together as well because you're going to need that bulk in size when you're using quick links the problem is is that you're creating a very flat surface and honestly, they only come in 11 inches or 12 inches on the bag, but let's just say 11 to be comparable. Um, they do take up very little area. And again, it's a very flat area. When you inflate 1 16 inch, look at how big that thing is. It takes up so much space on its own that when it's twisted into a cluster, it not only takes up a lot of space, it, all, it takes up dynamic space, which means it already has that round shape to it. It already is a different size, which is interesting to look at in a wall. So we wanna make sure that we include these guys into our clusters. So the inflation process, honestly, everybody asks me about this too, should take about 35 minutes for a wall this size. And you're going the speed I'm going here. So you're picking up, everything's double stuffed before, you're just tying two at a time and then letting them go on the ground. That's pretty much the speed you should be hitting is 35 minutes for a wall this size is more than enough time to blow up all those balloons. And when I'm tying here, again, we're only tying the inside necks. You can choose to tie both necks, but it, does, it doesn't do that much. It's just as secure with one neck and it's much easier on the fingers. So that's how I'm going so quickly. And notice that when I am pulling the two necks, I'm pulling them quite far apart. That's not for dramatic effect. That actually helps you tie because some people don't pull those necks and they go immediately from twisting the balloons together to immediately tying them together. And I find that when I pull them apart, I give myself more slack on the neck and that actually makes the tying process much easier for you. And some people ask uh, why I have the band Band-Aid on there and if it helps. The Band-Aid is there merely because a couple of my nails broke off in the process and they became very sharp. So if Band-Aids do help with the sharpness of the nails. So now I'm blowing up the chrome. With the chrome, I'm starting with the seven inch. Yes, those are the seven inch. They, the, when you think five inch and seven inch, that's gonna be pretty close. The seven inch is actually pretty big. And we all know that the chrome has a natural oval shape to it. As you can see, they blow up in pear form almost rather than round form. So here, what I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing. I'm just blowing them up in twos, tying them together. The chrome I'm trying to make a little bit bigger because I'm almost trying to make the seven inch comparable to the nine inch, which is really hard, you know, because it is a smaller size. But anyway, I'm trying to get as much shine out of them as possible by inflating them to max capacity. Chrome balloons are very, very 
fragile balloons to work with and they're also very expensive balloons to work with so what i would say is do them last because you want to spend the most amount of time on them like get your hands warmed up for them don't spend all of your time just getting the chrome balloons done and then you're too tired to do the latex because tying chrome after tying latex is much easier as you can see as i'm inflating them the size on these things is ridiculous not the size but the size and the shape you see how they're kind of oval and they come out weird honestly chrome has that chrome is not a perfect balloon it's not as sturdy as the latex as the other thicker like fashion or jewel or pastel latex balloons so it's much thinner and sometimes it doesn't come out perfect but these balloons here we're not putting them in a bouquet people aren't going to individually see these balloons they're going to be tied together and twisted into a cluster so we're, we don't really care that much about how these balloons look like this so again sometimes i'm making them smaller sometimes i'm making them bigger it really depends but i'm trying to keep a lot of them fully inflated for the chrome because i really want that color to shine and pop and again, another tip, don't let people distract you. <laughs> I'm kidding, while you're inflating, because really people say that it takes so much time, you do so much on site, but really if you get down to it and you just inflate, like I said, 30 minutes, you're done inflation, another 30 minutes, you're done assembly, 30 minutes and you're done detailing. So it should take an hour and a half, honestly, whether a garland or wall, it just matters how quickly and how efficient you are at doing it. And as you can see, even a pro like myself gets uh, distracted by things on site. So it's a true reality of an on-job thing where you have to always keep your eye on the time. And sometimes this happens too. You see this? This little squash balloon here. If that happens, that's okay. Just deflate it a bit, get rid of the neck there, and just morph it back into shape. Balloons are very, very malleable. They're very durable. So don't be afraid to play around with them. And if you're really, really taken off by the fact that they are not round, you can take the time to individually make them round. But I guarantee you, in the final look of the process, it won't make that much of a difference. All right, so making clusters, guys. Everyone asks, how do you make your clusters? What is the important thing about clusters? The important thing is, is when you twist in these four balloons together, these four quads, the center must be so strong that when you flip them up, when you make these four, the center must be aligned. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. You see this giant cluster of 16 inch and 11 inch. How do we make sure that this cluster is tight? Well, this is how. That's how it should be. I'm going to pause right here. So if your cluster does not look like that in the center, whether it's garland, whether it's a wall, whether it's literally any cluster that you're tying to another cluster, if your center does not look that dense and is not twisted in that, that way, then your clusters will simply not hold together. Some people say, I pick up my garland and it moves, it's not tight together. Well, it really doesn't matter whether you use fishing line or whether you use 260s or whether you tie your clusters together. It comes down to if the foundation of your cluster is not that strong and not that interconnected and tied together, then your cluster will be loose. That's basically it. That is the whole trick. If I can look into your garland, reach into any one of your clusters and pull those balloons apart and see that strong of a center, your garland will hold together. Your balloon wall will hold together. Support, no support. The point is that I'm really trying to drive in here is that the clusters must be twisted together that tightly. And then as you see, you have many knots to pull from inside of the cluster. So when you're tying these two clusters together, when you have two really tight clusters, you pull two of the loosest ends from those two clusters and you just tie them together. Now, again, it's hard to see, but come and look, this is what it looks like. So I pulled out two ends. You see how small those ends are right there? They're menial, but that is literally what is holding it together. That is the base core structure. Again, you can go over, but look at how strong it is. You can go over with fishing line with two 60s, but it is very strong on its own. And that is the point I'm trying to drive here. If you tie your clusters together, they'll be all good. So a chrome cluster will be much smaller than our sapphire blue cluster because we don't have the 16 inches in the chrome. So we only have our 11 inches and our 7 inches. So when we tie these two clusters together, just like that, it's going to be much easier on the fingers, which is exactly why I say do the sapphire blue first and then do the chrome. 
because it's going to be much easier for tying um, during the inflation process. And when we're tying the chrome to the sapphire, this may be a little tricky. Pull out the loosest end from your chrome or sapphire. So we're finding the loosest end. We're reaching our hand in there and we're trying to find it. And once we pull it out, we have to give ourselves slack. So once we find it, we don't just start tying. We got to pull it out nice and tight to the other cluster, use our body. You can either push it to the floor. I don't really recommend this because the floor can have something on there. I like to push it on my knee or push it against my body and just tie it together. So again, this is what it looks like when you're gonna be tying that chrome onto the sapphire blue. Very little connection. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really pulling there, but that's what keeps those clusters nice and strong together. So this is what it looks like. This is the rest of the process. I have my clusters. I'm gonna be arranging them through sporadically basically. So I don't want too many dark blue together. I don't want too many chrome together. I want it to be mixed so that the wall is nice and even with the color. And you know, some clusters may take you a little bit longer than others. Some of them have shorter necks, some of them have longer necks. And that also builds into experience when you guys are inflating, inflating and tying your duplets, your two balloons together. I'm just gonna pause right here before we get on to that next part. When you're inflating your two together, leave a big neck because when you're gonna be tying your cluster, some people tie their two balloons together and they leave barely any tip to tie or twist uh, your clusters later on. Leave a big neck when you're inflating and that'll really help tie your clusters together. So that's my really big tip number two. Tip number one was make sure your cluster necks are nice and dense. As you saw in that photo, tip number two is make sure when you're inflating, you leave the neck part out for yourself so that you have something to tie your clusters to when you're done twisting. So onto this fun part, the, the Ikea knot lamp. Now on these things, when we started using them, I believe they were like $6.99, then they moved to $8.99. Now I Googled it, today in Canada, it is $13.99. And in the US, in some parts, it's $16.99 or even like $18.99. So these Ikea knot lamps, I'm gonna link them down. This is what they look like. This is what I use for my centerpieces, for my balloon wall, for the garland sometimes as a little base. They're really durable. They're, they're pretty great, honestly. You can sandbag these things and they can hold a 20 by 20 wall. So they're, they're comparable to conduit uh, poles. They're, they're metal, so they're not plastic. And they weigh about, I would say, seven pounds, maybe 10 pounds. So it's not, it doesn't weigh that much, but it's definitely enough to hold. So I didn't sandbag this look at all. So it was enough to hold this look. And I would say it was enough to hold by nine by nine. But again, see the reference link below to make sure that the size of wall that you are creating is gonna be enough to hold by two knot lamps. If anything, I've created other sizes to be held by three knot lamps. So let's get started. On this knot lamp, we have six poles that we're putting up here. And this is just one knot lamp, not sandbagged. We have our clusters that we tied together. So I'm gonna play and as I'm just twisting on that last one, you wanna bit, put a bit of tape on that tip so that it's not sharp. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna try to slide it back right into the garland. So I'm gonna be sliding it from the back so that you guys can see. Start at the bottom because that's usually where I start or you could start at the top but then you don't know where the bottom's gonna end and just slide on your cluster. So we're not twisting them, we're not doing anything, we're merely sliding them on. So just move the balloons out of the way and make sure that the centers of your clusters are around the pole. Now once they are, twist a few of the balloons. Not a lot, just a few, just to make sure that they're nice and tight around the pole. So one, two connection point, that's good enough. It's not going anywhere off that pole. And once you're done with that, just push it down. And that's what you have. So that cluster of string, string cluster, I would say, is nice and secured on the knot lamp. I'm doing the exact same thing with my next strand. Starting with the second one, we're gonna pull it through. We're gonna start with the bottom. Don't get discouraged with the 16 inches. They're gonna create a beautiful, lush, bigger bottom there on our right corner. So keep them there. Don't think that there's too many of them. There it definitely is not, because we have many details coming. We have the nine inches, the five inches, the flowers still coming. So don't worry about any holes, just worry. The only thing you really should worry about is 
is if your columns, the ones that you're building out right now, look too similar. So if they look like they're a little bit too perfect or a little bit too 11 inch or a little too 16 inch, try to fix that, but try to have splotches of little balloons and bigger balloons and this color here, this color that, try to not make it all the same. So the only way that you could really screw up is if they're all the same, okay? So as you can see, tying two together, two of the big guys, two of the big clusters of the 16 inches. And now what we're doing is we're creating that middle part. Now that we kind of have pole one going on one side, pole two going on the other, we're gonna be creating the middle part, which is going to be the meat section of our wall. Now for this size of wall, I'll only be needing one string of clusters on the inside. If you are going to be making a wall that is bigger, you're going to be adding more strings on the inside, but the technique is exactly the same. And again, see the string reference guide for the size of wall that you're going to be doing. But again, for this wall, all I need is one meaty string of clusters in between my two knot lamps. Okay, so I did the top of my first lamp. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 260 cues, my 260s here, and I'm going to be tying three. One at the very top, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to go around my top cluster, I'm going to lasso around it, and I'm going to go around my knot lamp and the cluster, so the lamp and the cluster, two times. Okay, and that's what's going to secure that top point. And once that's done, that not only secures the top cluster to the knot lamp, it also makes a rig point at the top of our knot lamp. And I'm going to do the exact same thing at the bottom and at the midpoint of our first knot lamp. So that's going to make sure that the left side has secure points. We're going to go on and do the exact same thing to the right side later. So that's that secure point done. Again, go around. You don't need to physically go around the garland. You can just intertwine it while your hands are inside of the knot lamp. You could just pass it through to yourself a couple of times and intertie it. And there you go. That's the three points. So once you're done that, let's take our big meaty part of the garland that we created that, that, gar that cluster string. And now I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna look if I want that big 16 inch blob at the top or do I want it at the bottom? I decided that I wanted it at the top because I know that the top of my right knot lamp is a little bit on the smaller side. So I kind of wanted the 16 inches at the top because there are a lot of 16 inches on the right at the bottom. So to balance that out, that's how I made that decision. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. Once you've decided which is the top and which is the bottom, grab that 260 and wrap it around. So bring it from the front and wrap it around to tie back into the knot lamp. So as you can see, my hand is going around and it's tying right into the knot lamp. And that is just one point secured. So once that one point is secured, you have something like this. It's a little wobbly right now, but again, just because one point is secured. Now we have to make it more secure by attaching the midpoint. Now the midpoint is going to be attached the same way. I'm going to bend it down, push it right into the cluster string beside it and go around, around the garland, around, around to the knot lamp. Once I get to the knot lamp, you can choose to lasso more, but honestly, even tying it once around the knot lamp is very tight. And what you're going to do is you're going to go in just like this and just do a regular tie, regular tie once. So that's once, and then you're going to go in again and tie twice. All right, and when you back out, of course, there's, you're gonna see the 260. We're not trying to not see the 260. We're making the frame of our balloon wall. And think of it this way, you have your nine inches clusters, your five inches, your florals, possibly orbs or bubbles or whatever you choose to do in your garland or wall, sorry, or garland. Uh, you're gonna need spaces to put those things into. If your wall is nice and compact and, and all the way sturdy to not even have one hole to stick anything into, it's gonna be very hard to detail that wall. So once you have your bottom cluster there that you want to be twisted in exactly like that, I just rotated it a few times to make sure that's how I want it. I'm going to go back and I'm going to tie it once again right into the knot lamp. I'm just going to go a few times around the knot lamp and I'm going to tie off. And as you can see, at first it was kind of loose, but now, now it's dense. So now this is what we have. Once it's tied at all three points, we could literally just lift it up, move it around. It's good to go. You could flip it, do whatever you want. Maybe you decide that you want to do your, your garland the other way or your wall the other way. You could flip it around. Knot lamps are absolutely beautiful in that way. Just disattach the base plate and everything's attached onto your poles. 
So from the back, this is the shot. You can see a lot of the work here. It's densing out. Um, but what I want to do is I always want to see my tie points because those little tips on the 260, they're actually great because I'm going to be attaching five inches and flowers to them later. So that's going to help out a lot. So I'm going to finish off the right pole and I'm going to finish it off by putting on my top cluster. Since I have a lot of the chrome in the middle, I'm going to finish it off with some dark blue at the top. Push it down once it's nice and tight. Same deal here. So I'm tying in the 260s into the poles at three points. This is a smaller size. You don't have to do three points. I just choose three points because uh, it's just more secure that way, right? So here we are. We're going in. We're going in around the knot lamp pole and we're just tying. So as you can see, tie to the knot lamp first and then lasso around it. So as you're tying, do one tie and then just do another tie. Make sure it's nice and secure. Give it a little pull to make sure that you did it correctly. And that's what you should get. Repeat the process for the middle and the ends, just like you did on the left side. So we're going around the pole. And as you can see, you see how those centers are nice and around the pole? That's how they're supposed to be. If your centers are nice and lodged into the pole, your wall will not move anywhere. It'll be immensely sturdy. But again, if your clusters are not twisted properly, then it'll most likely be that your wall will have a looser look to it. So that's that second point. And then we're just going to attach a third point onto the bottom. And that'll be it. So that'll be all the secure rig points that we're going to be using for this balloon wall. Now, again, some people choose to give it a once over lasso with a 260 or with fishing line with, for the balloon wall. You can choose to do that. If it was going to be outside, um, I would honestly, I wouldn't even do that. I would probably do it if the client specifically requested it, which honestly they never do. And if you're going to be making your balloon wall in clusters and not on fishing line with that two, two and two at a time, because two and two at a time, if one balloon pops, the other one flies away. In a cluster, it's nice and twisted in together and the latex over time like gropes to each other. So it's actually a more decent approach. Um, than just doing two and two at a time on fishing line. So once you have the three secure points here, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing. Line your balloon wall up, and I like to start at the bottom. So here I'm pulling over my 260 from my right knot lamp. I'm going across the middle, and I'm going back into my knot lamp. So once I've twisted it into the middle, I'm gonna go back into the knot lamp on the right side and do the exact same thing I did on the left, tie it right into the knot lamp. Now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna find my middle point, my middle point, I'm going to go twist it into the middle of the garland, pull it right through. Don't worry about it. Try to make it dense as possible. If there's a bit of space, again, space is your friend. Do not be afraid of space. Space lets you create beautiful things in that space and doesn't condense it. Because the problem is most people think that I need to make it as dense as possible right away. And don't think that way. Right now, we're not even halfway done this balloon wall. But in people's minds, they think, well, we're like 75% there. We just just need to do a little bit of a small balloons over here and there and we're done. And honestly, that's the type of thinking that was around when there were these quick link walls. But with these organic walls, you really have to take some extra time with it. Yes, the base of the structure is currently up. And again, this is not what takes the most amount of time. Right now, we're about 45 minutes in to this balloon wall with inflation and assembly. Realistically, this would take you about an hour and a half to get to the point where I am right now. That's exactly why I say take three hours to do your entire setup, at least on a balloon wall. And when it's done, you see, you could just pick it up by the knot lamps and just push it right into where you want it to go. So we could have pushed the balloon wall right to the wall itself, but we had a little look we were going for today um, with these cute doors that Amon has uh, from Divine Displays on Instagram and A White Decor for plinths and backdrops, the beautiful gold square backdrop. So that's the look we were going for. To make filler clusters, once your base structure is in its position, you take your little five inches on 260s. And I'm just going to pause right here too as I'm holding it out this way. What you see here is you see in my left hand, I've got five inches. And on my right hand, I've got five inches that I just twisted in a duplet of 11 inches. What those are, are filler clusters. So I wouldn't even call those clusters. I know that they're referred to as clusters by other people. A cluster in my mind, like in balloon terminology, a duplet is two balloons tied together, a quad is four balloons tied together, and a cluster is eight balloons 
twisted together. So it doesn't matter uh, the size of the balloons. It just matters that there's eight. So that's why I don't really refer to these guys as clusters. I will refer to them as filler. So these filler, I have the five inches in my left hand. I have the five inches and the 11 inches on my right. And they're connected by a 260. You can choose to use the whole 260. I personally choose to use half because that's as much as I need. And it gives me two times the amount of 260 from one bag. So when you have your half of the 260 that you're tying off to your fillers, one on one side, one on the other, try to find a place where you're going to be putting them. So here we go. Let's unpause. I'm going to decide to put them right into that hole right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach around. I'm going to take the 260 and wrap it around one of the balloons. Once my 260 is wrapped around, as you can see, one of the balloons, I'm just going to twist those two together and pop them into place. Now realizing where I want to put them. I see that that little hole is filled up by that guy over there. So maybe I'll take this little group of five inches and place them a bit more to the left. So as you can see, that little filler already filled up and detailed at the same time. So one more time. Here's my 260, my five inches. I'm going to reach the five inches. I'm going to choose that balloon over there. I'm going to reach over it under and pull my filler under it. Once my filler is secure, I'm going to start to move the filler into place. So here I decided to move the big guy up to the left top and the small one right in the middle. And as you can see, the wall is starting to have character. So this is really where the artistry comes in of balloons. This is everybody's personal style, what everybody thinks looks nice. Maybe some people think five inches don't look nice. Maybe some people think that 16 inches shouldn't be in this wall. Everybody has their own personal opinion. I'm just showing you a technique here that you can use to manifest your own design. So again, if you think the five inches are too much, feel free to replace them with nine inches or maybe include one five inch and the majority of them be bigger balloons or go the opposite way. Replace the five inches with nine inches or with um, chrome, more chrome balloons, whatever you think would look best in this design look. So now I'm looking and there's a lot of darkness happening and the little bit of light that I have popping through. It's nice, but it's not enough. And what I mean by that is that you see a little bit of blue, but you only see a lot when there's character and accent. And you do that by adding these little seven inch and five inch clusters of balloons. So here I only added in a bit. You only have six balloons per my little mini filler cluster. And I'm gonna be adding them in, tying them right into the five inches that I just put in. And when you're tying them, they're going to seamlessly blend in. This is the trick here. You need to create a strong base so that when you're detailing, it allows you the surface to detail on. Now I can actually go in and handpick which balloon I want to face out where. And that's really the artistry of it. Having the chance to actually go, this balloon goes here and this balloon will go there. That is how you decide how to make your balloon wall look accented. Now, again, same thing happening. In this bottom left, we see a lot of the 11 inches, but they're not accented by any focal pieces. The focal pieces are those little five inch balloons that we see that are nestled into those overinflated seven inch. That's what's really pretty. So once again, let's make another detail piece. We take our little five inch, three inch, seven inch add a bit of the 11 inch to it and now it creates a dynamic little filler piece that we can use to plop into the bottom now the bottom is very long you don't need height for the bottom so i'm twisting around my cluster to see how i can maximize the surface area of the cluster with with showing all the detail that i just worked on but not pushing it into place sometimes this takes a little bit of time and that's why i say making a balloon wall beautiful is the most amount of time inflating the balloons putting the balloons together that doesn't take the most amount of time what we're doing right here twisting each and every little filler cluster to make sure that every detail you add adds to the garland or to the wall and does not take away from your look is what you're trying to do. And again, it's going to be immensely hard. There's going to be very little end to work off of. So as you can see, that's as much as I had to work off of and I made it work because that's how tight it has to be. There's going to be absolutely no slack. Um, as you're going to be filling out the balloon wall because the slack was already given in the cluster part. 
So as we're detailing off, I just attached that piece. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach another chrome piece, but I'm not gonna attach it into the wall. Again, I'm gonna attach it directly into the filler I just attached. That is my tip number three. Attach accent and cluster fillers to the fillers you just put in on the 260 because that will make your wall less dense. It'll make it more dynamic, meaning it'll have more body and volume to it, and it'll just make it more interesting to look at. So this is what we've created so far. Taking in another filler to fill out the bottom a bit more. Again, I'm taking a filler and I'm tying it directly to the filler cluster I had just made. This one is not that bad. This one actually had a pretty big neck to it. So once I tied it in, I was able to manipulate it a little bit. And once I have it in place where I want it, I step back to see what I've done so far and see whether some place has too much blue, one place has not enough blue. I realize that the top has quite a bit of the dark blue and not enough of the detail that I'm looking for. So right now I'm gonna be making smaller baby clusters. So again, I'm just gonna say that here I only have three of the 11 inch balloons everything else is literally five inch and that's what helps me get into these nooks and crannies when you're creating something like this I could have gone to the outside cluster but this time I chose to go kind of outside of the frame because I thought it would look like the wall is dripping out of the frame which I thought would look cooler than just the balloon wall being inside of the frame and that final look what we just did twisting in that little filler piece in the corner that's what it looks like so that little piece on its own, I feel like made that corner bit. I mean, you, got, you can argue with me, but I personally feel like that sectioned off the corner really well. It detailed it, and I like how it looks along the floor. I like how that left corner looks in general. Um, I'm really happy with it. So the work that we did on this left side, honestly, it took about 15, 20 minutes. So you have to realize that now we have to detail the middle and now we have to detail the other side of the balloon wall. So don't slack off. Just because you did one side and you're really happy with one thing, keep moving as quick as you can too. So here we are, we have our little five inch filler. I'm gonna be starting to fill out the middle of this balloon wall because we're already good with the left side. We're filling in that middle now um, and again, make sure that those 16 inches that you put into the base, make sure you see them because these little fillers, you don't want them to block the work that you do. You want them to accentuate the work that you do. So again, here's my little cluster of eight balloons. There's seven inches, five inches, three inches, little detail clusters. And once you place it in, the, beauty, the beautiful thing about tying in these little fillers is that you can move them around. So I didn't really like how it looked over on the right side. So I moved it a little bit to the left and I definitely like how it looked in the left crevice much more. So that's where I left it. And then what I'm gonna be doing is because there still is a bit of, quite a bit of dark blue in the middle top section, I'm gonna try to even it out by adding more of the light color. So here I've chose to do a bigger cluster. Here I did a cluster of eight once more, but I added a detail piece of two five inches that kind of spreads my cluster apart and makes it wider than it seems. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna reach into the neck of the filler that I've just tied. And as I'm tying on, I'm being mindful of the gold bar, of course, um, and I'm gonna be pushing it back under once I tie it in. So again, once you have these fillers, tie them in first and then push them into place because you don't want uh, to be tying directly where it is and then not having the chance to move it about. So here I am, once it's nice and tied, I'm just gonna be moving it back to exactly where I wanted. Since it's all secured, I'm not really worried about it shifting um, the wall whatsoever because everything is secure to each other. So I have the chance again to play around with the wall, which is what, what really makes these walls, intricate walls interesting, is the little details and the work that goes into making something detailed like this. So here I am, and if you don't like something, look at how aggressive I'm being. I'm being immensely aggressive. So I'm pushing it down, I'm trying to see where I like it. It's starting to fill out better, um, but I would say if you're not happy with the size of something, for example, like if you think that it's too much or it's sticking out too much, keep going with it, keep playing around with it, just make sure that you're not overdoing it. So in my mind, my mental, um, 
my mental restriction is the gold bar. So I'm visually trying to not go above the gold bar. I'm trying to make it as even but not perfect because I'm not the biggest fan of exactly lined square walls. I like the organic look. I like them dipping out at the sides a little bit. So I've already put that chrome cluster where I thought it looked good. So now I'm going to be filling it out across the top with a bit more of the sapphire blue. I feel like that'll just make the top part because I feel like the 16 inch right now is just sitting up there. I kind of want it nestled in rather than just sitting on top. So there we are, twist it around, twist it around. Again, the time spent on this is not actually inflating or making the clusters. It's putting the clusters into the balloon wall and then spending your time twisting them around when really you think you're doing nothing, but that's what makes the balloon wall look good. And you'll only know what I'm saying when you try to make a wall on your own, when you realize that the time does come from twisting around and seeing where, where it looks good with what. So I'm working up the chrome on this left-hand side and I think I'm gonna make the chrome join. Well, not I think, this is pre-recorded. I definitely know I'm gonna make the chrome join in the middle, but in my process, uh, when I had drawn it out, you know, sometimes you get to a venue and you feel like the lighting is different or you thought that the left side was gonna be well lit. Now the garland or wall needs to be on the right side. So keeping all these things in mind as you're working, you're always gonna need to make little changes and little adjustments. And it's about knowing how to make these adjustments and how to work with the process of creating something like this. So again, now that I'm basically done the structure of it and the detailing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, just gonna fill out that bare section between the middle and the left. And sometimes you can even use clusters of sporadic balloons. When you're almost done something, people cannot tell, or honestly, anyone cannot tell whether you put that balloon in first or last. So you wouldn't be able to tell if I did that cluster first or last. That's exactly why it doesn't even matter at this point if you're putting in chrome or blue balloons mixed into one cluster cluster. And if for some reason, not that it's this reason, this case, but if you do run out of balloons, this is also a great method because people can't really tell. If you're adding in four balloons from one color, four balloons from another, then you can just twist them on site like I'm doing right now. I'm just twisting the dark blue to the dark blues and the chrome to the chrome, and they actually look like they belong to the other clusters. Once we're done, basically done, filling out our balloon wall with our fillers, again, leave some spots for florals and some for the final, final five inch details. Set up the rest of your look. In this look, we're doing a double door wave. Got Angelita and Amon on the team, which makes my work look absolutely that much more beautiful. We've got our little flowers that we're putting in on our 260s. Again, rip the tags off as you're going put them into bunches and wrap the 260s in, up and around them. Okay, once you have them in a group bunched out together, the important thing is, is to flail them out. So make sure you fan them out, make sure that your hands are pushing in the stems and create a bit of a curve. And as you're fanning them out, put them into place. So as you can see, I could have chosen to put little balloons in there, but I chose to put flowers. And as I'm fanning them out and putting them back, I'm reaching the 260 back into the back so I can go back and tie it in later. But first I'm gonna see if that's the spot that I wanna put it in. Cause you can either put all your flowers in and then go behind and tie them back, or you could tie it as you go. It really depends on how you wanna do it. If you're sure on the flower look, if you 
you know this is exactly how much I want, where I want it, then tie it in exactly. But I would say when you have long stems like this, it is not necessary at all. I would say get all your focal pieces in there and then secure them because it's just going to take more time to secure and then cut it off if you don't like it there. For the big pieces, as you're gonna see, look at the amount of flowers I have in there. That is a hand bouquet on its own. So you wanna make sure that the amount of flowers you have is at least a handful. And what I'm saying is at least 12 stems in there. So you need to make it a whole bunch to put into the middle. You can do smaller bits like I did at the top for the outlaying, like the exterior of the garland, but for the middle, middle of the garland, you have to make sure that there's quite a bit of flowers in there. Because if you're trying to go for that very floral look, then that is how much you're gonna need to put in there. So that is just merely one bunch. Look at how big it looks like in my hand and how small it looks in the balloon wall. For or even the size that it is. So that one I'm 100% sure I want there. So that's why I already tied it in and arranged the flowers like I wanted them. Then I made a bunch just as big as the bunch before and I'm gonna put it in very close to the bunch I made because this is the other important part. You gotta put them in close. So you can't put them in in small amounts. You have to put them in in large amounts and close, right? The, that's what makes it look good is that you have to put a large amount of them and spread them out to each other so that it kind of looks like they're growing out of one spot. Now these next parts too, I'm trying to personally keep the purple flowers, the darker flowers to the uh, sapphire blue and the lighter flowers to the chrome. So again, tying them in together. And as you can see, they're really bunched up, bunch them out, separate those stems. And then there's a little dark pocket over there in the blue in the sapphire and I'm just gonna pop them right in there and look at how it takes away those shadows. So I personally find that the balloon wall, the floral balloon wall is really made at this point because you're looking at it as a balloon wall. And then once you pop the flowers in there, all those little holes or all those little spots that you thought you needed to fill up all of a sudden go away because flowers take quite a bit of space. And we all know that those stems are very tough to work with. They're long, they're pointy, and I'm not even use, using any kind of protection because, and by protection, I mean some people put saran wrap around the stems. I used to do that, but now I've found that if you 260 them nice and tight, and if they're high quality florals, honestly, even the dollar store florals I call high quality because they're coated with the plastic on top of the wire. It's not like the wire is exposed. So if you point a hole and put all the stems through that hole, you will pop no balloons because the stems will just reach out on the other side and the 260 just keeps them plopped right into place. Now, once they're in there, half the work isn't just putting them in there, it's also trying to make them look nice. So you don't just want a glob of flowers in there. You wanna make it look organic and make it look like it actually belongs there. So I'm just gonna pause right here. And as you can see, this is the final look. This is how it looks with all the florals placed in there along with all the plants and how it looks with the little floral arrangement. I tried to make the match to make sure I have the same blossoms in the wall as I did in the arrangement. So let's talk about pricing here for a second for something like this. Now that we're done with this part, let's really get into how much this all costs. The material cost of this wall is in totality to me, $220. So when we look at the latex cost, all of the balloons cost $140. The IKEA knot lamps, costed $50 total, because I bought three. Um, so that totally cost me $220. Now, when I look at labor, this took me, let's say, three hours to create with buffer time. I charge $100 an hour for three hours, that would be $300. And the delivery fee that I charge for up to 30 kilometers in the GTA is $50. So that looks like my labor and delivery cost is gonna be $350 with a total material cost of 220, which gives me the suggested recommended price of $570. So you could take that number and really you could make it your own. You could choose to charge $50 an hour. You could choose to charge more or less. That's really dependent up to you. But the cost for us vendors is exactly the same. It is $220. The $140, we're all gonna pay the same more or less. The $30 or the $50 that you're gonna spend on knot lamps depends on where you're gonna be buying your knot lamps because they are cheaper in Canada than they are in the US. So you may have to spend a few more dollars on that. Florals, 
I had spent $50 on all of the florals that I'd used for this balloon wall. Now, yes, that was actually $50 because as a registered business, my recommendation would be for you to go out and meet the wholesalers in your local areas there because you're going to get quite a bit of a deal. If I go into a dollar store, I'm going to be spending about $75 to $100 to get the same quantity and quality of floral I have up there. And what I mean by that is we all know that cheaper flowers like the daisies or, you know, the cheaper pink looking flowers are always going to be available in those stores. But the flowers that I was looking for particularly here, had I had to buy this quantity in these colors and these types of irises and, you know, hydrangeas and Juliet roses and orchids, there would be so many things that I would have to pay extra for in a regular store. That is why I urge people to really either pay the 60 or $100 you have to pay to become a sole proprietor to have the chance to buy florals at a decent price and not overcharge yourself and your clients. So again, $50 is the amount that you should be spending for a look like this, not anymore. And if you are, then you probably should be sourcing from a better place. So my recommended price, if you're charging anywhere in the 500 range, you're doing a great job for a wall that is one single stuff and one double stuff color. Again, this is a very, very luxury look, but the fact that we used one single stuffed and one double stuffed color really helped save on the cost. And the fact that we use such high quality florals placed strategically really elevate the look as well um, and help bring it to a more luxury status rather than that typical balloon wall you see everywhere. I just want to thank everyone so much for joining me today for this organic balloon floral wall class. I had such an amazing time filming this and doing all the up close shots. I hope you guys learned a lot. And if you have any questions or comments or need any additional help on little detail things, please leave me a comment down below and I will get back to you. And any work that you guys do, please feel free to tag me or send me your pictures to my email and I would be more than happy to either post them here and share them with everyone or give you some feedback on that. All right, guys. So that's it for me. Until the next balloon class.